Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. And man, oh man, do we got a cool one today. I'm not typically a tea bucket guy. I'm far from it actually. But this one has caught my eye a few different times at shows that I've seen it at. This thing is just a badass. Bill, the owner and the builder of this car, he's a former NHRA drag champion. This car is a fully built car. He's an engine builder nowadays. It started life as a 1923 Ford. Far from it at this point, as you can tell. So we're gonna get into some serious details on this one. So hold on, man, because here we go. Hey guys, this is Bill Moropoulos. Bill's the builder, owner of this vehicle, and we're about to talk you through a ton of details on this car. You start with a 1923 Ford. I started with a Speedway engineering chassis and body. That's it. <laughs> I had the idea for the engine because that's what I do for a living. Right. And I built this particular LS2 for a NASCAR series, and one day I kept looking at it, I go, man, I'm putting a tri-power fabricated manifold on an LS2 get rid of the coils, put a distributor in it instead. I said, it'd make a cool hot rod engine. So I had to find a car that I wanted, went to some car shows. Everybody's got 32 Fords, nice cars, but yeah. you know, the hood would probably be on it. You wouldn't see the engine. So. Right, right. And uh, I saw very few T buckets. So I said, and I really didn't like these buckets. Yeah, <laughs> you and I agree on that, which is funny because you don't like them, I don't like them, but yet, and I'm sorry for anyone out there watching that's into T buckets. <laughs> No offense, man. Just uh, not not my flavor. Oh, definitely I, not <laughs> yours. But yet this one, this one's not your traditional, typical tea bucket. You know, I knew it would show off the engine, and that's me. And I come from, you know, I race dragsters in competition eliminator, which open wheel cars. So it really fits my personality. Yeah. But like I said, I didn't want the, you know, the straight up window and the roof and the shorter fat tires and. Right. You know, I mean. A lot of people love them. I got friends that just love that style. I just wanted more of the 60s hot rod look. Yeah. So I committed to this, the Roadster laid back window and it just kind of evolved, you know? I mean, uh, I said, nobody was building them. And I said, let's try to build one from scratch and do it a little different. Yeah. Like it's triangulated four link and uh, air ride suspension. I mean, it's oh, stuff wow. that, that typical team buckets don't have. And, right. And like I said, it makes 604 on my dyno, 538 foot pounds of torque, and it weighs 1,770 pounds. So, God, <laughs> man, talking about power to weight. In but your, uh, in... because the heads are so efficient, you don't have to put a big cam in it to make that kind of power. So it drives just like my Corvette. Yeah, I mean, and you drive it a lot. I mean, you said uh, you've put almost 10,000 miles I, I on might, it this might year. Might have just clicked to 10,000. Can you believe this that, car. you guys? 10,000 miles this year on this car. <laughs> so it's an LS2, which would typically be fuel injected, right? Right. So this is all custom, like everything you've done here. I mean, from, <clears throat> from here down, everything about this is custom. I mean, you right. can see it's all CNC. Right. right, everything's one off. So I built it for the NASCAR series. Well, when they wanted to go to the LS, NASCAR says, well, you can't have electric fuel pump. You have to have a mechanical fuel pump. And they wanted a distributor because you can cheat with the coil packs and the computer with traction control. So they went to Chevrolet and Chevrolet and built a front cover that allows you to put the distributor in and it'll accept a mechanical fuel pump. I don't have it in because I've got an electric one. So got that it. gives it the old school look. And of course the three carburetors is old hot rod stuff. Right. But putting it on top of an LS, we had to build a manifold. And, and my friend Hogan's racing manifolds, when I raced, did all my manifolds. And, Tyler, his son, runs the company now, and I said, what about if we do a tri-power tunnel ram for an LS? And he goes, Just draw it up, let me know. <laughs> wow. So he built them. So the manifold was like the first thing, and then the car kind of got built around the manifold. Wow. And, uh, and all the parts in it are, I mean, full-on race parts. They're all parts that came out of rebuilt motors that when they get a certain amount of miles on them, we retire. Right. So, I mean, it literally has a $2,800 crank, Carrillo rods, tight ported heads, titanium valves. $300 valve springs, you know what I mean? And I just called in a lot of favors from when I raced. I called three of my customers that raced the two barrel classes at Irwindale and stuff, because I wanted two barrels. And the first so three that's I what I these called, are is three two barrels. Yeah, big ones, they're all 500 CFM. 
Got it. So there were race car bears and I figure if I call 10 customers, three of them will give me a carburetor. The first three I called sent me a carburetor. Wow. I sent them to my <laughs> carburetor guy. He took them apart, re-anodized them, rebuilt them, made them look brand new. And, and they all just donated the stuff. My That's trans, so cool. My transmission guy that sponsored me when I raced built me the Turbo 350, 10 inch converter, 3,500 stall speed. So it was, half the car was donated. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cool. And then my machinist, uh, and Hogan's manifold, you know, he machined the manifold and the valve covers, the valley plate and the fuel rail. And Chris Wakeham over at Race Concepts, right next door to me, we did the air cleaners, the coil brackets, uh, the little manifold for the air ride here, you know, um, knobs on the dashboard. So yeah. everything's kind of one off, you know, it's not. How about your different. headers into your exhaust? That's, that's the headers, all. Custom as I wanted well. to put Borla's on it because nobody does that. They, they most of the tea bucket guys like them loud. I'm too old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like I'm them fairly <laughs> quiet. And the quiet 600 horsepower is going to be tough anyway. Yeah. So what I did. But it is really quiet. I, I <laughs> when you pulled in this morning, it's nowhere near right. what I was expecting. Yeah, I just got that little low to it. And yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So I wanted the Borla's and then put the little muffler in the pipe that the normal tea bucket guys do. So the headers had to go forward before they went back to create enough room. And what's the color? What do you call that? It's actually a Chrysler color. It's Is it a, really? It's called Deep Molten Red Pearl. So it's got two kinds of pearl in it and some metallic. Yeah, I get a lot of compliments. It's kind of an accident how the color evolved. But the interior, Mike Ambrose did the interior. I never met him, but I wanted a nice interior. He's in North Hills over here. Yeah. And everybody says, you got to go to him. So I called him and it wasn't done yet. I had a dummy engine in it, but it was painted. Yeah. And uh, I pull it over there on a little flat trailer and he goes, uh, so what color are you thinking? And I go, tan? And he goes, good boy. He said, if you'd have said black, I'd have told you to go home. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, the interior is great on this. Yeah, he, Simple, uh, but really, yeah. really beautiful. I gave him total carte blanche. I said, you can do what you want. Two things. It's got to have a cup holder and I want it more modern looking than more tea bucket looking. Oh yeah, you do have a cup holder even oh, in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. You know, he, he really knocked it out of the park. When I yeah. first saw it, I literally welled up in my eyes. And he said, you want to see pictures uh, of it was done? I said, no, I want to be surprised. Oh, uh, that's awesome. The wind wings, my machinist Chris made the uh, brackets to hold the wing winds on. And Got it. That really, so that helps to oh. cut down the wind, huh? When you angle it back, the faster you go, the higher it goes over your head. Got it. So, so the faster handle, you're going, the less wind flow yeah, you have. My hat will stay on 80. I haven't tried 90 yet, but. Speaking of 80, what'd you say this car is zero to 80 is? Three seconds ish in there, you know. We, we kind of timed it once a guy did like that and he says, oh, it's right about three seconds, you know. You know it's hard. That's hauling ass, yeah. dude. My ZL1, which is a pretty impressive car, is zero to 60, 3.5, yeah. 3.7. Yeah, You're zero to 80 in three seconds. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's driving. I mean, the tires are pretty sticky. It's a really good Mickey Thompson street radio with a real uh -huh. soft sidewall. Uh -huh. Yeah, but you're only moving 1,770 pounds. Right. So right. by, uh, and, and I mean, that's not, slow. you can't push the throttle down, you just smoke the tires. Right. So from my drag racing days, I, I kind of have a feel, and you just kind of feed it. But I mean, literally, the motor goes past 8,000 with no issue at all, you know, so. <laughs> wow, I, mean, I can't believe you're getting over 8,000 <laughs> well, RPMs. It's titanium valves and big valve springs. You know, the heads are fully ported, so, you know, they, they flow a lot of air. And then I put a cam in with a lot of split, a lot of duration split intake exhaust and tight centers. That'll give it a, a kind of a, a big lope. Yeah. You know, it's not great for mileage, but we're not doing these You're for not mileage. doing this for <laughs> mileage. Come so, on, look uh, at that. And it handles pretty well for a straight axle car. You know, I mean, I got the suspension, uh, you know, as low as I could get it, because most tea buckets are high. Right. But what I like about the tea bucket clan, no two are a lot, but that's the thing. You put your personal touch on them, yep. you know. You go and see a 71 Chevelle, and you know, they're pretty much similar until you look at the interiors and stuff, the difference. Right. But I mean, here they, from the radiator to the bumper, they everything's will, personalized. Yeah, they'll you know different kind of lights and lanterns and you know the, the old school where the steering wheel went straight down. And, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, this yeah. has the tilt wheel and my, I can plug two USBs in it, so it charges my phone, keeps the GoPro running. If, if I'm in a long trip, I can recharge up my heated clothing. I love that. He's got heated. He's got a heated vest on, well, you guys. I, I left for he a had a he heated gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. We talked you through the details. Now, see if this old man can climb in here. Oh, oh man! Way younger than me. Oh, look at that. I guy built a low one. All right, we are going for a ride.
All right, you guys, well, what do you think of this tea bucket? Just simply badass, right? Gotta say a huge thanks to Bill for bringing this car out. Seen this out at a couple of events and I'm just stoked we got to shoot this one. Like I said in the intro, I'm really not a tea bucket guy. It's not my thing and this car just knocks me out. Think about a few of these pieces too. Zero to 80 miles an hour in about three seconds. That car's cooking. It's the perfect blend of modern technology with old technology everything he did here and top it off this car was built in seven months and that's including the car being at interior for about seven weeks so this thing came together quickly this is a guy that knew what he wanted knew how to build it and he knocked it out just blown away by this one anyways i hope you guys had a great time in this episode you know i had a blast and as always i thank you for watching and supporting what we're up to i truly do appreciate it and i will see you in the next episode all right, man. Later.